sensationalism. A young man at the University of Colorado died this year of cancer, but before he died, a close friend bore him a son. Now, that should be enough for a compelling situation, but get this. The young man was the star quarterback for Colorado, the nation's top college football team, and the mother of his child is the coach's daughter. Here's Scott Rappaport. <laughs> This is a story of tragedy and triumph, of indescribable sadness and incredible joy. A baby who lost his father, a football team that lost its leader but found inspiration in his courage. It's the story of Salonesi. He was the superstar quarterback for the University of Colorado Buffaloes. This was supposed to be his dream season, the culmination of his college athletic career. After years of steady improvement, the Buffaloes were destined to be number one. Sal would lead them to the top. Last January, Sal began to feel ill. None of the doctors could tell him what was wrong. He made plans to join his friend Cindy Schaefer for a vacation, but it was clear his health was failing, and the doctors wouldn't allow him to make the trip. Cindy went anyway, and that's where she got the news. They called me back Tuesday night, and they told me I better come back. They told me it was cancer, but no one knew, you know, to the extent that it was. The diagnosis was stomach cancer. Doctors told him he had less than a year to live. He was more worried about us than himself. He was more worried about how we would react, what we would think. He didn't want us to hurt. He didn't want us to know how much he was hurting. Soon after his illness was made public, Sal vowed not to give up the fight. I know I'm going to beat this. Uh, with the help of the Lord and all the support I've been uh, getting, you know, I'd like to thank everybody for all that. I appreciate it, and uh, uh, I'll be back on the field sooner than uh, most people would think. When we came back to school here, and August, that was the first time his teammates had seen him in three months, and he had deteriorated so that it really tugged at their hearts. At the start of this season, Sal was much too ill to play. He watched the first three home games from the sidelines, and the team drew inspiration from his presence. What used to be a simple game of football was fast becoming an emotional crusade. Well, Sal was always smiling, and uh, even when he was dying and near death no one ever saw him at a weak moment his spirit was always buoyed and if you came around him he was challenging you and, and enlisting you to exhorting you to carry on sal's condition worsened and he entered the hospital as doctors worked feverishly to save his life he wrote his teammates a letter that would haunt them throughout the season it read in part hold me dear to your hearts as you know i do all of you Strive only for victory each time we play, and trust in the Lord, for he is truly the way. I love you all. Go get him and bring home the Orange Bowl. On September 23rd, Salonesi died. His death shocked his teammates. The man who had never let them down, who had inspired them in their undefeated season, lost his greatest battle. His family and friends were shattered. Sal's will to fight inspired everyone around him, but he had one more surprise in store for his teammates. In the meantime, they had a mission, bring home the national championship. It was his dying wish, and he deserved nothing else. The team finished the regular season undefeated. They're ranked number one in the country and will play Notre Dame for the national championship on New Year's Day. Well, Sal said bring home the Orange Bowl, so it's not done yet. Sal's number eight is everywhere, from his teammates' jerseys to the tape on their wrists. From the cheerleaders' sweaters to the mascot's horn, even the fans hold it high. They all remember Sal and his impact on this team. His locker has been enshrined, and many players draw strength from it. I play right in front of his locker every game. I sit there and pray for a couple minutes, you know, and ask the God to pray for the whole team and tell, tell Sal to say hi. There's not a day go by uh, that you don't think about Sal, you know. Uh, I keep a picture of him next to my bed and, you know, just remind me that you know, things can always be better. Sal is still with this team in spirit. On a recent road trip, they saved a spot for him. We put a seat for him on the plane, and we put a, uh, had a bed for him, and his name was on our itinerary. You know, everything we took to let Sal know, you know, let us know that Sal was there with us. Sal, um, he was a personal friend of mine, and 
I love him dearly, and he'll never leave him. What Sal did leave is perhaps the most remarkable and touching twist to this story and his legacy, a son. At a memorial service for Sal, Coach McCartney publicly acknowledged that his 21-year-old daughter Christy had recently given birth to a son, a child fathered by Sal Onessi. Christy had been friends with Sal. Still, her family was surprised to learn of her pregnancy. Though Coach McCartney had difficulty accepting it at first, he and his wife have given Christy their support and have pledged to help raise their only grandson. It was very difficult at times with my daughter uh, being pregnant to Sal. And so, uh, in their relationship wasn't a firm one. So, I struggled through that a little bit, and he did too. And, uh, but through the grace of God, we were able to uh, continue to have a very positive relationship. While Sal was sick, um, we'd go see him at the hospital and everything, and he would take off his oxygen mask and just wave to him and say, Hi, son. I love you. Timothy, at seven months old, bears many of his father's striking Samoan features. He is a happy reminder of a man who meant so much to so many. Oh, I want him to know everything about Sal, um, especially how courageous he fought and just the type of person he was. I, I'm in the middle of making a scrapbook for him, so I'm, he's definitely going to know Sal. This was supposed to be a dream season for Sal, the year his teammates would carry him off the field as a champion. But in death, as in life, Sal has proved to be an inspiration to his coach, his team, and maybe someday to the little boy he left behind. His dad was a very unselfish guy, very team-oriented. Uh, he always uh, deflected praise when it came his way and shouldered blame when it was uh, coming upon the team. And so I'll remind my grandson that um, he has big shoes to fill. When Colorado plays for the national championship, Christy and her baby will be on the sideline.